They're just like, eh, eh, no, drive along, move along, metal fanny pack. What a great crowd, nice looking crowd, a lot of ladies. Any single ladies? Do we have any chubby chasers in this bunch? Because I am easy to catch, gals. Quick game of tag after the show. It'll be freeze tag, I'm not moving. I just stand still and you win, <laughs> that's how it works. No, oh, I'm single. I found it's, uh, it's tough being single when you drive a smart car. I found that out the hard way, you know? You really can't holler at the ladies from a smart car. I've tried, you know? I roll up, what up? You know, just looks like I'm wearing it. And women are like, is that a metal backpack you got on? What the hell? It's cute, I guess. I'm like, no, it's my car. Don't make me honk the horn and prove it. I'm like, it's so pathetic. Just, eh, eh. It just sounds like women when they see me in that car. They're just like, eh, eh. no, drive along, move along, metal fanny pack. Get a real car, maybe we'll talk. I'm always like, I wasn't gonna give you a ride anyway, okay? Actually, I can't. My right cheek already called shotgun tonight, so get to stepping. Move along, sister. Give you a ride? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what women want, you know? I think they want a man with a truck and a horse and a, and a dog the size of a horse that drives trucks. I don't know what they want. I really have no idea. Um, I just rescued a kitten, so if you're looking for a tough guy. You know. uh, his name is Sir Meows a lot. Um, <laughs> I call him Meowsy, and he's very sweet. I spoil him, you know. At one point, he had like three different litter boxes, um, which is pretty unnecessary because he always goes to the bathroom in the exact same house plant, so <laughs> didn't really need to do that. But thinking about putting a picture of him on my dating profile, you know. I don't look like this online. You know, nobody does. I, I look like a, like a pit Clooney hybrid, you know? I went out with one girl. I didn't look like me. She didn't look like her. I was like, hey, we catfished each other. How about that? Pretty sweet. <laughs> so we went out for fondue. That's what we did. Um, I don't know if anyone's done that. Anybody been to fondue here? It is really expensive is what it is. Yeah. We're like $200 in. I was just like, can we just get a third shrimp, please? The waiter's like, would you like to try dessert? I was like, yeah, let me go sell my smart car. I'll be right back. Let's sample those strawberries. Insufficient fondue is what I call that meal. Fun don't have the cheddar for that cheese, you know what I mean? I'm pretty broke. I really am, you know. I do most of my shopping at the 99 cent store, so. You know, yeah, it's a weird thing to cheer for, but I do. I, uh, I buy everything there. I bought some scented candles there, made my whole house smell, you know. Uh, like the 99 cent store, just moldy and defective. They had other scents too. They had expired and lead <laughs> and made in China. That one's exotic. I'm gonna go back, collect the whole set, you know. But you know, I did dress up for you guys tonight. This is my least stained outfit, so you're welcome. You know? I really want to do one of those red carpet interviews one day, you know, where they're like, uh, with the celebrities, like, who, who's, who are you wearing? Who's your designer? I'd be like, oh, I think his name is Ross. Uh, <laughs> I got it at Ross. I like to dress for less, you know what I mean? These are Tom's shoes, uh, not the brand. I stole them from my buddy Tom, and... <laughs> Actually got this shirt back when I was in the army. Thank you. Uh, you're right not to applaud. Not a hero. It was the Salvation Army and <laughs> took it from their lost and found sex. So, balling on a budget. <laughs> you guys are good. This is a good crowd. I'm so happy to be out here with you guys. I got to fly for comedy, which is great, you know. Uh, not bragging, it was spirit. <laughs> Has anybody else flown the Greyhound bus of the skies? <laughs> it's, it's my price range, you know. $9 to anywhere, you know. You don't know where to land, but that's half the fun. If they crash, it's $4.50, so still pretty good deal, you know. 
They do charge extra for everything on Spirit. I don't know if you guys have flown. It was like $50 for my uh, emotional baggage on that fly. It's crazy. How do they know? What are they, psychic? It's ridiculous. My plane was delayed, too. They had to stop off, get more gas at Costco, which is crazy, but it's a minimalist kind of airline, you know? They have one employee that I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, but I suspect, you know? Like, I had to use the sky cap last time when I flew. I was out of the curb, this nice lady named Myrna's helping me, and I was like, oh, thanks, Myrna. And I had to, like, make my flights, like, run all the way up to the gate. I'm out of breath. I give the ticket. It's Myrna again. I was like, what? Did you sprint? You are fast. I got on the plane. Myrna's the flight attendant, too. And she's all, sit down, buckle up. I gotta go fly this Airbus thingy. There's only one of us. I was like, They're cutting corners. The seats don't recline either. I didn't know that. Did you guys know when you... I'm not making that up. Seats don't recline on Spirit. I was messing with mine. I was like, what the heck? Excuse me, Myrna. Is, like, uh, is my seat broke? She's like, no, nah, no, nah, you're broke. You're flying on Spirit. That's the way our seats function on this particular airline. I was like, oh, all right, I guess I'll just sit upright for six hours, you know. She's all, that's the Spirit. Enjoy your flight. I was like, oh, Myrna, you got me again. I'm happy to be here. I love traveling for comedy. I grew up on the East Coast. We have an East Coast people in the house. All right, a couple people. My parents are still back there, like the New Jersey, New York area. I like that area, you know, because I like the accent. They all sound like they're on the Sopranos all the time. You know? They just tell you, forget about it, or whatever, you know. Like last time I had to visit, I took a cab, you know, and even the cab driver sounded like that. I get in the cab, he looks at me in the mirror, he's like, yo, not for nothing, but it's gonna be 45 clams. You get to the JFK airport and don't be a jerk when it comes to my freaking tip. I was like, whoa. This guy was Asian, by the way. Did I mention <laughs> that part? I might have left that out. It was confusing. It was weird. But I live in California now, which is nice. I, I thought it would be safer, you know. I moved to this little hippie beach town. California's stuck in the 60s, you know. I thought it'd be safer than living on the East Coast, but no, I got involved in a drive-by, like my first day there. It was, a, it was a hippie drive-by, you know. The guy rolled up on me in a VW bus. <laughs> first he had to crank down that window. You know, he's all, break yourself, fool, hippie drive-by. I was like, what the heck? And then he blew bubbles at me. <laughs> had to block that with a dream catcher, you know what I mean? I was like, not today, sucker, I don't think so. And try showering and soap once in a while. And then he threw some flowers and seeds at me, a couple of doves flew out. It was so peaceful. It was my kind of drive by. Oh, so that's the most exercise I got today. Um, a little winded from that act out. You know, you're in great shape when you get winded doing stand up comedy, you know? Now I'm trying to get in better shape. I started seeing a personal trainer, so yeah, that's about the right response. It was two years ago, so not working that great, you know. She gave me a fitness test when I started, uh, which I failed. I actually got held back. I'm in remedial fitness now. She makes me wear a helmet when I work out, which is ridiculous, but it's for my own safety, so I do it, you know. I'm not flexible, you know, she'll ask me to stretch. I'll be like, mm, I think my limbs are the wrong lengths for that. You know, she'll go, touch your toes. I'm like, why was I cursed with these T-Rex arms? I need an orangutan physique for this workout. I want to be more flexible. I tried, you know, hot yoga. That's a real California thing. It's really embarrassing too, you know, they turn the heat up in this room till it's like surface of the sun, levels of heat. Then they make you attempt impossible stretching moves while listening to like pan flute music. <laughs> and the whole time I'm just concentrating, just, just trying my hardest not to fart. That's hot yoga. That's it, you know. Don't like it, I'm not going back. But I did learn one cool move though. You know, when you fart during hot yoga, that is called downward facing smog. So. <laughs> Don't be behind me in hot yoga class. Anyway, feeling good today though, guys. Had a great day, you know, nothing's bringing me down. Very productive day. I, uh, I spent the whole day um, trying to get out of a group text, actually. 
spoiler alert, didn't make it out. Still stuck. There's no way out of those, you know? I hate group texts. They put you in there against your will. No permission needed, right? And then when it's like, you ever get stuck in a group text, it's all mystery numbers? You're like, these are strangers. How did this happen? It's crazy. I think it's because nobody wants to actually talk on the phone anymore, right? People will thumb type out the great American novel to you just to avoid talking on the phone. Like, when was the last time you saw, like, someone calls you on the phone, you're like, who's this lunatic calling me on my phone? And you don't answer, but you just text them right back, you know, oh, who's this, you know? They will send you the longest. I get, you know, the great American novel, just like, it was the best of texts, it was the worst of texts. <laughs> I get texts that are so long, they can't even get them at once. They're dropping down in sections, like, chapter one, it was a dark and stormy text. I'm like, Where are the cliff notes for this, you know? I hate text, and I think if you're gonna text me, just text me right back. Don't wait a week, because I've moved on with my life by then, you know? You ever get people just be walking down the street and just get a random, ha ha, and then what happened? I'm like, I have no idea. I have moved on, I don't know. They start sending you emojis, like purple eggplant, smiley face, fire, are these hieroglyphics? What are you trying to say? And they LOL for everything, just like grandma's sick, LOL. That's inappropriate, okay? Don't do that. I just wish I knew how to get out of the group text, really. I know how to do it on Facebook. You guys know, if you, if you get stuck in one, you can scroll down, hit leave conversation. You guys know that? This is the teaching part of the set. <laughs> Leave conversation, that's my favorite button. I wish they had that for real life. You know? <laughs> if you're in a stupid argument or you know, somebody's in a group thing, you're at work in the break room, they're arguing about baked goods or something. Just like, I like muffins with seeds. I prefer scones. What about you, Jesse? They turn to me, I've just disappeared, left a note behind, says, Jesse has left the conversation. <laughs> Peace out, scone lady. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> I know I'm getting old when I start complaining about cell phones and texting. That's how you know when you're old when you compare stuff to back in the day. Like if you ever say back in the day, you should just be like, back in the day, because that's the way you sound now, you know? I do that every time. Like I'll turn into a thousand year old man when dubstep music comes on the radio. I was driving over here, dubstep comes on, I was like, what is this noise? <laughs> back in the day, we had real music like Devo. <laughs> we used to whip it good, you whippersnappers, back in the day. How old am I now? I, that happens to me every time I see a kid complain about his cell phone. You know, I'll just be like, Mom, the Pandora radio is down on my iPhone 64 for two seconds. <laughs> oh, I just want to jump out of a bush, scare the heck out of that kid, you know? Just like, back in the day, <laughs> portable music was called a boombox. <laughs> Some of us called it a ghetto blaster. <laughs> you, you carried it on your shoulder till it gave you spina bifida back in the day. <laughs> Stay off my lawn. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to eat better. It's hard. You go out to like restaurants. Every menu has this like build your own burger thing on it. It's too much responsibility. I'm not a burger architect, you know. If I build a burger, it's going to be top heavy. I'll tell you that. So I'm topping it with chili and deli meats and cookies. I'm building a cookie burger. It's not up to code. Don't check the blueprints, but I'm building it, you know. I used to be a waiter, I used to wait tables, I hated picky eaters, they're the worst. You come to, like take their order, you know you got a picky eater table, they're looking at the menu like, eh, it's a real nice rough draft you got right here. <laughs> We're gonna revise the heck out of that. Yeah. People love to make a million substitutions too. Man. People do it differently, like the guys want the bro deal. They're always like, bro, hook it up. Give me this steak, all right? I don't need this side of potato either, bro. I'm on keto, so just slide me a second steak. Do it, bro. Yeah, and I don't need this salad either. Just, just give me a third steak. Can you do that? Yeah, I want a short stack of pan steaks. Just keep stacking them, bro. Stack, steak, bro, steak, bro. Hook it up. I'm like, no. Women will whisper their impossible requests. <laughs> like, that makes it easier, I guess. They're like, excuse me. Excuse me. Can I just get this without the onions? I'm like, well... Those are onion rings, so no, I can't do that. I'm a waiter, not a wizard, okay? I could check with Chef Dumbledore in the back, but he's busy making our onions bloom. I don't think he can remove the onion from the onion ring. That's dark magic. You take that to Applebee's. Beat it. Picky eaters, man. I waited tables during the height of the gluten craze, too, you know? Nobody knew what they were, but everyone was avoiding them, you know? 
People are like, I don't, I can't, don't give me glue. I don't know what it is. I think it's a glue and I don't want paste in my food. <laughs> don't give me glutens. I don't want wheat. In fact, no grains of any kind. I'd still like to order this toast. Can you do that? Can you make bread from dreams? That's what I'd really like. I'd like a dream bread sandwich with a side of pretend fries and some imaginary juice. Hook it up, chop, chop, no glutens, move it. Yeah. Fat people don't worry about glutens, you know. Like food allergies, you know. What's it gonna do, make me swell up? Too late, uh-oh, all food does that. I am swollen right now from food. These are just hives, I'm breaking out. Got two hives up top, big hive down low. Feeling a little hivey, I'm like blue hivey, I'm Beyonce's kid, you know what I mean? If you liked it, you should have put an onion ring on it with no onion and no glutens, hook it up, bro. You know, picky eaters, they too, they send food back when it's not perfect too. It's crazy, you know, just be like, excuse me, I ordered linguine, this is clearly fettuccine, seems teeny, wrong any, send it back. I'm like, what? You're not hungry enough, you know? I don't send it back. I, was, I waited long enough. It's time to grind, you know? I could mess up my order. I'd be like, excuse me. I ordered spaghetti. You brought me this squirrel. But that's okay. I'm not sending it back. Just need more sauce. It's a dry squirrel. Do you have any squirrely sauce? Hook it up, bro. No glutens. I don't know. This is funny. Like, some people think fat people just eat anything. Like, we just love everything, you know? This will blow you away. I don't like ranch. What do you think about that? I know, look at that face. People look at me like, I'm, what are you, a communist? What is it? They're like, ranch is our lifeblood. We would dip a flip-flop in ranch and eat it. It's still, I don't like ranch. I don't want ranch. But I mean, I'll eat it, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to send it back, you know. They could bring my food like, here's your burger, sir. It's swimming in ranch. I'd be like, well, sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I think. <laughs> But you know what? No, excuse me. Can I get some cookies to crumble on this as I'm trying to make the cookie burger? Thank you. No, I'm happy to be here with you guys. This is so much fun. You know, I, I love being a comedian, but I didn't want to be this when I was a kid. I wanted to be something heroic, like a fireman, you know? Because everybody loves firemen, right? Except for the cops, because they're jealous of how everybody loves a fireman, you know? <laughs> There was like, oh, these sexy firemen. <laughs> Always shirtless, sliding down poles, posing in calendars. Are they exotic dancers or public servants? I don't know. <laughs> you wanna see my cop calendar? Check it out, I'm buying a donut, pulling you over. You don't have your license, you're under arrest. <laughs> Check out December, I'm tasing Santa Claus. <laughs> Not a happy new year. I don't know. They gotta hate the, the firemen too, because the firemen always show up early, you know? They're like, hey, we're the first responders, beat ya. <laughs> There's nothing burning, so we're just getting cats out of trees and stuff, you know? I don't know how they got that job, honestly. I, I think they just didn't trust the cops with that job, you know? <laughs> like somebody was like, hey, my cat is stuck up in the tree. And the cop's like, yeah, where? And they're like, right there, <laughs> meow, not anymore. <laughs> And somebody was like, hey, that was a black cat. And they're like, what does that matter? And they're like, black cats matter. And other people are like, all cats matter. And it's like a whole big problem. So, yeah. so we got to leave that job for the firemen. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I did see a cop the other day on a Segway. And I like that, you know. That's less intimidating, you know. And the cop rolls up on me in their car. I'm like, ooh. But cop rolls up on you in a bike helmet, you know. <laughs> And he's like, you're under arrest. I'd be like, well, you're adorable, so bring me in, I guess, you know? I don't know how you bring someone in on a Segway, honestly. You know, just be like, you're under arrest, now hop on! Grab my hips. I want you to spoon me all the way to the station. Yeah. You know what, I'm gonna turn on a little Luther Vandross, because you have the right to remain sexy. Crazy. Glad to be doing this with you guys. You know, if I wasn't doing this, I really, I'd just be Netflixing. I don't even watch anything either. I just browse. Anybody else? I'm like, no time to chill, honey. Netflix and browse. Keep browsing. I hate these shows. They all suck. If I settle on a show, I'll binge watch every episode just to not go back to browse. You know? I watched like five seasons of Sons of Anarchy before I realized, hmm, I hate this show. You know? I thought I liked it. I don't know. I mostly watch cooking shows, you know, because... I love cooking shows. I just hate cooking. Isn't that weird? Those two things should go together. They're always like, the main ingredient is love. 
And I'm like, well, I hate that. So I don't know how that would work. How do you cook with hatred? That'd be a horrible cooking show, you know? Be like, tonight on Cooking with Hate, we're gonna be cooking with the white rice and only the white rice. No brown rice or that Spanish rice. Some people might call me a ricist for this next dish. I'm not, I am not. I am not a ricist. Listen, I will date women of all rices, I'll tell you that. I dated an Eskimo gal recently and I was totally Inuit. You get that? That's a pun. It's, it's pretty silly, but. Tough thing about meeting Eskimo gals, you know, just trying to break the ice, it's tough. You need a pick and a hammer, it's a whole problem, but. I met a good one though, you could call her Husky. That was, she had one brown eye and one blue and a white fang, which was weird, but. We had a good time though. She wanted to go out every night clubbing seals, mostly just beating the heck out of seals. It was wrong, it was morally reprehensible. But, you know, she was crazy, you know. Not like bipolar, just polar, straight north or south. I don't really know where they come from. I don't research these jokes. Just kind of make them up, you know. Um, but to be honest, I did think she was the one, you know. We almost got married too, but in the end, you know, she got cold feet and started blubbering. So that's, that's the end of that joke. It's, it's like, thank you. Applause break for 27 puns? What? That's weird. Oh, I'm excited though, you guys. Next I'm going to the South on tour. It's very exciting. And, you know, I like the South because it's really like the birthplace of slang, you know. And I'm way behind on my slizang. Um, I know that because I went out with this young girl and she was using all the new lingo. Didn't really understand a word of it. Uh, I just know that I gotta stay woke, apparently. Whatever that is. Gotta be woke. I tell women now, I'm woke as a joke, okay? I am from Oklahoma. That's how woke. I don't even have a snooze button. I just have a stay woke button. I hit it all day long, baby. I don't know what that meant, but... That's why I'm going to the South. I gotta update my slang, you know? Last time I was there, I learned a lot of new words. I went into this 7-Eleven in Atlanta to buy some Febreze, because I was smelly. That's not the story. Anyway, and I went up to the counter and I was like, hey, um, do you guys sell Febreze? And the lady looked at me like I was totally insane. And from the back, this other lady yells out, what he looking for? And the lady at the front goes, aerosol. And I was like, yeah. She goes, aerosol over by the gummy chews. And I'm like, I'm gonna like this store, you know? <laughs> and I went and got the Febreze and I like, put it up on the counter. And the lady in the back, she yells out, he found what he looking for? And the lady in the front goes, yep. And slides it over to me and verbatim, she goes, he gonna eliminate all his smells. And I was like, yes. <laughs> New favorite store. I was like, I'm gonna be back every day just to see what you call the rest of this stuff in here, you know? I was back the next day, like, hi, I'm back. Could I purchase some milk? She's like, you mean cow juice? Cow juice over in the coolie tank. I was like, yes. How about a chicken sandwich? She's like, clucky birds by the Tady Crisps. <laughs> like, okay. Weird, but I wanted to stump her. I was like, this might be weird. You guys sell deodorant? And she just looked at me like I was loco, you know? Lady in the back goes, what he looking for? And she goes, stank sticks. I was like, what? She's all stank sticks over by the chomper cream. I was like, chomper cream? Is that toothpaste? What is she goes, it's underneath the funk powder. I was like, I don't know what funk powder is. What, what's funk powder? And the lady in the back comes out, she goes, funk powder like aerosol for your funky parts. You gotta use it to eliminate all your smells. I was like, well, sign me up then. Let's do this. And that woman's name was Myrna, which is crazy. She's following me. She's everywhere, you guys. This is fun, I wanna hang out more. You guys wanna hang out later? Or... Maybe we should go dancing or something. Anybody do... I'm trying to dance the weight off, you know? I went uh, salsa dancing recently. They call it chunky salsa when I do it. Boom! <laughs> Had a girl ask me if I was into merengue. I said, yes, lemon please, hook it up. <laughs> I enjoy the snacks, you know? I grew up on uh, rap music. Any hip hop fans here? Any... Rap... Okay, nice. Two chains, you like that? Two chains, I used to go by two chins, but not as, not as good, but. No, I like hip hop music, cause like if you don't have music, you can just make it up yourself, you know? Like I learned how to beatbox, I can show you guys. It's very easy to make beats with your mouth. All you gotta do is say boots and cats. You can do it with me, it just sounds like boots and cats and boots and cats, boots and cats. 
right? If you want to snazz it up a little bit, just add cats that poo bats. He goes, cats, cats that poo bats, and up, cats, cats that poo bats, and up. It's easy. Thank you. And then, like, third lesson, if you want to, like, scratch the record like a DJ, just say, eats biscuits. Huh? So he goes, cats, cats that poo bats, eats biscuits, cats that poo bats, eats biscuits. Let's battle, you and me. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, that's my time, you guys. Thank you so much. My name is Jesse Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now.